growing matter of worship the school could then take over the Latoka site once the permanent Wilson is rebuilt. Two, Sarah Adult Center is the flagship campus for adult education. across the board, student to student, school to school, that the central campus was being closed. And we're very glad that the board and the administration have recognized that. The petitions she received were from virtually every site where we have adult ed students. Um, we're concerned that we maintain a central site with GED and high school diploma, as well as the ESL. And as Jim mentioned, Mr. Larson is here tonight, who's the head of the PTA, and Wilson has stated clearly and authorized us to say they're willing to look at Portola. They're happy to share it with the Chinese Emerging School. They've talked to various of the parents involved with the Chinese Emerging School. So the board is in a position to keep us unified and centralized.
comes out and doesn't want to do something with it because we're on the rebuild list. And so we're on the rebuild list and maintenance doesn't want to deal with it. But on the other hand, we're not getting rebuilt yet. So while we wait to rebuild, we would like to be in a safe facility. We would like to be in a place where we don't have to worry about the building falling apart on us. Um, again, I, we've been trying to work with you, um, encouraging you, showing you what we have. We also did a survey of transportation of our families in which I had to crunch the numbers and we found that only about half of our students and families indicated that they would be using a bus. The other half would be coming by car. Hopefully that is something to reduce the numbers. There's other things we want to do. We are very concerned about the fact that we want to share that we're good neighbors. That even when we're gone, that our site doesn't become a mess. Because it's still going to be where Wilson is going to be. We want the neighbors to want us back. We want the neighbors to know that we care about it. Because that is still where we, most of us live. That is where our heart goes. Steve's also with the Fed Public Education now. Uh, this past week, we learned that there may be bankruptcies at LAUSD and Oakland, edu uh, at Oakland uh, Education, uh, Oakland Unified Education, OEA, OE, OESU. And we have to look at the reasons for this potential bankruptcy. In our view, it happens to be because of Prop 39, which is requiring school districts to approve charters. Uh, they're putting school districts in financial jeopardy. At the same time, we have a racist campaign by these charter schools to exclude blacks and have all racially uh, divided schools. We have to stop the charters. The school district should sue against Prop 39. It's an illegal uh, law that uh, does not protect the financial integrity of school districts. Additionally, it is draining the public schools of money and it's created a two tier for the charter school teachers and the public school teachers. We don't need two tiers for our teachers. For people who want professional, high qualified teachers, we've got to pay them more and give them the quality and respect that they deserve. You're not going to get it with the charter system, which forces teachers to clean uh, up and do the service work that other unionized service workers should do. The other thing is that we uh, say that this is adult education should be, de should be defended. We don't need to have co-location. This is another issue that is driving the destruction of schools, and that's co-location, breaking up public schools for these charters. We need to stop it now. Thank you. Youth working in this independent study school. And I got to hear all kinds of stories from students that came from all kinds of problem backgrounds and ended up not finishing in the traditional school. Unfortunately, I also got to hear a lot of stories from students that didn't make it through our program either. And the stories end with them not getting a diploma. I think that as I began to talk to the WIOA providers and listen to what they are able to do with uh, providing them with a, a, a view of a different future than what they've had and a career path, um, they struggled with the opportunity to provide them a quality education to go along with that. They would try to send them to adult school, which um, was not a good fit because it's a day-long program and with uh, adults that are much older. And with this program, we have the online setting that they can do right at the center and go ahead and complete their high school diploma with a vision for the future, for a, a job and a career, and to be productive citizens. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I think what we see in this uh, operation that's being presented to you, this marketing plan, corporate marketing plan, is what Betsy DeVos really wants, which is complete breakup of public education. What kind of accountability do we have that any of these students are doing anything? How can you follow online students who, when teach at home, or they don't show up, they do show up? This is shopping mall education. And I think it's a scam. It's a way of stealing money from the public. Uh, I think that you have to stand with the NACP and oppose uh, the charters. Uh, they are destroying education and they're putting the district in financial uh, liability. Uh, you're putting money out. We had a whole presentation tonight about students, public school students who need new schools. And we're going to give more money to this operation, this privately run operation. This is not a public school. There's a misnomer that's been put out to the public 
that privately run schools are public. They're not. I pay taxes. Don't I have any say in a public school? In a private school, I don't, which are the charters. I think we have to stick with public schools and spend our money on, on the public schools. And furthermore, uh, there are some transparency bills that are in the legislature. Uh, I don't really believe that they solve the problem because these, the regulators who have been appointed by Governor Brown in the Department of Education are actually privatizers themselves with the Magnolia schools and others. So the privatizers are actually pushing charter schools that they're going to benefit personally from. And that's where the corruption and conflicts of interest arise. So we have to stop it now and take the first step by rejecting this. Thank you. My name is Jamie Fall. I'm a, a, a resident of Elk Grove, California, and uh, formerly I was Deputy Secretary of the Labor and Workforce Development Agency. Currently I serve as Director of Upskill America at the Aspen Institute in Washington, D.C., splitting my time between California and, uh, and Washington, and I'm focused on really helping people um, get the skills that they need to move up in the workforce. We work with large employers at Upskill America and try to help them invest more in the skills of their workers. And one of the facts that I've come across and realities that I live with is that um, we have 40 million people who are working age adults who do not have their high school diploma. And uh, if they don't have that original initial credential, they're never going to be able to move up in the workforce. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity to help people uh, complete their high school diplomas, get some career experience, and have the opportunity to move up. I've, uh, I, am, I am serving as a chief workforce strategist for A3 schools to help them get connected to the workforce system in California and uh, think that uh, they're going to be able to provide some great results for people who need their high school diploma for those who are 16 to 24. Thank you. I just wanted to let the public know 
that the 1,500 members of the United Churches of Richmond passed a resolution against the expansion of charter schools at West Contra Costa Unified School District. The resolution wasn't to reform charter schools, to make them more transparent, nor to work with them. We demand that the charter schools stop. We're also asking, I'm also asking, not United Teachers of Richmond, but Kristen Jones and Defend Public Education Now are asking the superintendent and district to disclose multi-year projections on the impact of charter schools on district schools, including anticipated local, state, and federal revenue, anticipated increase in charter school enrollment and number of charter schools, anticipated decline in district non-charter enrollment, and other anticipated expenditures. We're asking for a disclosure of all public funding and supports for charter schools that pass through the district and validate how the district is complying with and not exceeding state requirements, identifying ways to reduce charter costs to the district and thereby increase revenue of our, of, for our non-charter schools, and not exceeding any other legal requirements in regards to funding and or support for charter schools. Authorizing additional charter schools means less revenue for our district public schools. Everything we've been talking about tonight, African American Achievement, Rebuilding Wilson, the location of the Mandarin School, all pivot around stopping the hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging of money to charter schools and away from district, away from district public schools. Thank you.